guys, my name is Nethmi. I am a student of Guru Nesi Institute Abhiman Sir's English Medium Science Class Grade 6. Today I am here to explain you all the third unit of our science syllabus. That is water as a natural resource. Water is the most important natural resource given to us by nature and as you all know water is commonly found in liquid state. Now let's do an experiment to identify the states of water. For this experiment you will need some ice cubes, a test tube and a burner. The method to do this experiment is first we need to put the ice cubes into the test tube and uh, then we need to heat the test tube by using the burner. The observation is when ice cubes are heated it turns into liquid water and when further heated the liquid water turns into gas. So we can conclude that water exists in three physical states such as ice, liquid water and water vapor. We can tell it as the water exists in three physical states such as solid, liquid and gas. Now let's talk about states of water. Water exists in three states such as solid, liquid and gas in the natural environment. Examples for water existing in solid state are ice, snow and glaciers. Example for water exists in liquid state are wells, ponds, rivers, lakes and tanks. Examples for water exists in gaseous form is steam and water vapor. Now let's do another experiment to find out whether there is water vapor in the atmosphere. For this experiment you will need a glass some ice cubes, water and a piece of cardboard. First you need to fill half of the glass with water and observe the outer surface of the glass after some time. Then you will need to put add ice cubes into the same glass of water and close the mouth of the glass with a piece of cardboard. The observation of this experiment is we can see water droplets drooling in the outer surface of the glass. So we can conclude that world, there is water vapor in the atmosphere because the water in the atmosphere condenses and can be seen on the outer surface of the glass. Let's talk about the type of water based on availability. There are three main types of water based on availability. They are precipitation, surface water and ground water. Examples for precipitation is rain, snow, hail and sleet. Examples for surface water is seas, oceans, lakes, rivers, tanks and examples for groundwater is wells, tube wells and springs. Now let's do an experiment to identify the behavior of rain droplets when they fall down. For this experiment you will need a glass tank, Stones, gravel, sand and clay. Now, as the first step, we need to put the uh, components of soil accordingly as uh, gravel, uh, stones, gravel, sand and clay. Now, we need to pour some water onto the tin with small holes and check the behavioral patterns of water when they fall onto the components of soil. The observation is... Water flows uh, onto the soil and it go, flows through the components of soil and there are some water remaining on the components of soil. The conclusion is the water which fell on the, uh, fell on the components of soil is known as precipitation or rain. The water which flows through the components of soil is known as groundwater and the water remaining on soil is known as surface water. Let's talk about the type of water based on salinity. We can divide the type of water based on salinity accordingly into three groups. They are fresh water, brackish water and marine water. What is fresh water? The amount of salt dissolved in fresh water is very low. We use fresh water for our consumption in our day to day life. Examples for freshwater resources are ponds, lakes, rivers, tanks and streams. What is marine water? The amount of salt dissolved in marine water is very high. 
examples sea and oceans now let's talk about brackish water the amount of salt dissolved in brackish water is higher than the salt dissolved in fresh water but lower than the salt dissolved in marine water examples estuary and lagoons now let's talk about the importance of water Water is very important not only for the existence of life but also for many human activities. Importance of water for human activities are to drink, to bathe, to wash clothes, uh, for, and for transportation and to generate electricity. Importance of water for the existence of life is for photosynthesis, for cooling the body, to digest food, for plants to absorb minerals and for, for the rigidity of plants. Now let's talk about why water is a limited resource. Water is a natural resource but it is a limited resource because most of the water that can be consumed is not in a good condition to consume directly. Water covers more than 70% of the earth but the percentage of water that can be consumed is 0.01. Water in seas and oceans is 97.41. Water in solid state is 2.58%. Water that can be consumed is 0.01%. Now let's talk about pollution, water pollution. What is water pollution? Addition of waste materials to water till it becomes unsuitable for consumption is known as water pollution. Our last topic for this lesson is some methods of water pollution. Some the methods of water pollution is dream, washing and bathing in water bodies. Addition of waste chemicals and agrochemicals to water bodies. Addition of waste materials and impure water to water bodies. Releasing polythene and impure water to water bodies. Releasing uh, waste materials and impure water to water bodies.